Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to another series of Jewels in 2020. I hope you all had a lovely holidays and us here at EGO are now getting back into the swing of practicing for the regional season. Um, uh, we have several regions coming up over the next two months in Stevenage, Reading and also in London. And so I am doing my best to try to encourage players to come down as much as possible and practice their decks. Now, um, uh, in this duel here we have Mr. Humphreys going against uh, Cameron. Uh, Humphreys is playing, or Jack is playing um, um, Salomon Greats on the left and Cameron is playing Salomon Greats on the right. And I'm trying to decide what's going on there because um, I see Jack's got six, five cards in hand and he just drew one. Which maybe suggests that he's going second. But uh, Cameron didn't play a single card. Now Cameron is playing Cyber Dragons, and Cyber Dragons really do prefer to go second than they do first. So um, um, maybe he just got a really bricky hand, and he actually can't play anything at all, and decided to pass. And I guess that's what had to have happened. Um, so Jack has gone into a bailing here, and Cameron is countered with uh, Vet Vela. I do not think that was a really good move at all. Hitting the bailings, if you have an excess of hand traps, and maybe that's what he has. Um, then sure you can hit the bait to kind of stifle their play but it really isn't the most effective card to save your effect failure for uh, but we'll see if Cameron has any other follow up plays here or so Jack is now activating one of the Salaman Great to have a face that's a trap card on the field in order to use Foxy's effects discarding Jack Jack he went into the graveyard to push something to the field and now um, he's going to use both Bailings and uh, Foxy in order to go for a link 2 which will have to be uh, Sunlight Wolf here um, yeah, it's Sunlight Wolf Jack. It's uh, not really any other cards you can really play right now. Maybe he's having a look at uh, Update Jammer. Don't know. Maybe he is. But um, Sunlight Wolf is going to be the obvious choice here because it can recur cards from this graveyard. And yep, there it is. Sunlight Wolf is coming to the field. Now, what we'll probably see here is a uh, use of Will of the Salamon Great in order to trigger Sunlight Wolf's effect. And there Jack is uh, using it. Um, I would summon that the Jack Jaguar, interesting, he's summoning the Foxy, and he's summoning it to knock the zone under Sunlight Wolf. Huh. Wonder why he's doing that, that's uh, kind of weird. I guess he could use Jack Jaguar under Sunlight Wolf, uh, shuffle back in the bailings, but um, yeah, I guess so. I guess it's a bit more damage that way, but uh, um, I would rather have the bailings in the graveyard for protection. I guess you could always summon it out later, so it's not a terrible move, but... Um, yeah, um, okay, no, we're gonna go for um, the Link 3. We're going to Heatly already. Hmm. No, we're reincarnated to Sunlight Wolf. I don't know why we're doing that. There are no spells or traps in the graveyard for Jack to recover. Um, and now he's using Jack Jaguar to summon under Sunlight Wolf. And I see what's going on here. Okay, okay, I know what's going on here. Jack, I don't know what happened over New Year's, but uh, I think he maybe had a bit too much to drink. And he has decided uh, to have swapped Sunlight Wolf's effects. So, for those who don't know, Sunlight Wolf's main effect is if you summon a card to a zone that it points to, you add a fire card from your uh, graveyard to your hand. That's the main effect. The reincarnated effect is if you have summoned it using Sunlight Wolf, um, you can add a spell trap card and back to the grave. And I think he has possibly mixed those two up and thought that in order to get the Foxy back to his hand, he had to reincarnate it, which he didn't. Not at all. But, uh, it's not the end of the world here, so what he has now done is uh, he has made Transcode Talker using the Sunlight Wolf and the Jack Jaguar, and he has used Transcode Talker's effect to special summon that Sunlight Wolf again underneath it, giving it a 500 attack boost and immunity to target effects. Um, could have been a bit more, I don't know if that's the most efficient play there, it is a nice chunk of damage. Um, but um, I think, yeah, that was a bit of a mistake there on that part. He could have done probably a little bit more than that. Um, don't know. Don't know. Even if he reincarnated, I don't know. He could have saved Will and gone for two extra monsters and trip by tripping it. But I don't know. So anyway, uh, it uh, looks like uh, Cameron's really, really pretty. Tight. He's pretty much just passed and said, yeah, I've got nothing. And um, on back to Jack's turn again, we have uh, a normal summon of Foxy. He has... Uh, I put up the three, top three cards of his deck and I actually just missed what three cards he added. I think he did add something to his hand. I think he got Gazelle there just now. Which is, um, if I'm not mistaken, this should be enough damage on game, on board for the game. Um, he's going to special summon out Gazelle in defense. Why? I don't know. 
Um, why how did he summon Gazelle? Uh, maybe he summoned it with Will. Okay, so we're, we're, we're really mixing up our effects today. So Will of the Celebrate Great, if you use it the effect to target a reincarnated Link and you summon the monsters, they come out in defense, but not if you use its main effect, you can just summon it in attack. I assume so. Am I, am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Feel free to correct me in the comments down below, but it looks like regardless of that, there was enough damage for game there. So, yeah, bit of a rough duel there. This is a... Um, this was recorded on New Year's Day, so um, maybe uh, Peer Pay is a bit tired and mistakes are being made here, but those are some really, really uh, basic mistakes there. So, uh, into game two, Jack is going to see Black is going to go first. Probably Cameron Cho said, hey, yeah, I'm going to go second because he's playing Cyber Dragons, and maybe we'll get to actually see a Cyber Dragon this time. So, uh, maybe let's cross there. Uh, Jack has normal summoned Foxy, and he's gone straight into Bailix, and now he's going to add Sanctuary to hand. Uh, no effect fade at this time. Um, Ideally, I would save something like Effect Failure for Mirage Stadio, um, if my opponent is able to do that. And if not, then I would go for a Sunlight Wolf, because they're both really good engine cards. Really good cards to hit. Uh, Bailing, not so much. Um, there are You can still reincarnate some of them uh, the normal way, without having to uh, use the field spell. So, it doesn't really stop you from doing what you want to do, or achieving your goals. Um, but... We'll see now what Jack's going to do. He's going to say he's going to summon back Foxy. Foxy's going to come back to the field by discarding Spinny. Then I'm going to assume Spinny's now going to come back to the field. And now we have two level threes, which is going to go to a Mirage Stadia play. And um, I think uh, coming up in the future, Salamon Gates is going to be a deck to watch with uh, their ability to do so many easy XE summons, especially the level three XEs, uh, with the new Master Rule coming up because of the. Um, release of limitations on XE cards and um, such because uh, you don't have to summon the monsters anymore. Um, Jack is going to detach and he detaches Foxy in order to special summon something from his deck. Uh, more than likely it's going to be a Gazelle as it usually is but um, unless he has Gazelle in his hand already. Um, yep there goes the Gazelle coming out in defense. And the Gazelle effect is going to send something to the graveyard. More than likely, going to be a Jack Jaguar for further follow up plays. And um, I don't know if it was right necessary to detach the Foxy. I would have probably detached Spinny myself. Um, because Spinny, just so that to go, uh, Spinny is easier to summon than Foxy. And it has less of a cost. Whereas uh, Foxy requires a discard. It isn't really ultimately too much of a difference in the long run, to be honest, but. Uh, I usually just uh, get rid of the Spinny instead of the Foxy. Um, then uh, now we've got Gazelle in the field and we've got Salami Great Raw in the graveyard. Jack's going to go for a link to using Gazelle and Spinny. He's going to probably bring out Sunlight Wolf. Um, ideally, he's going to switch extra monster zones and put Sunlight Wolf onto the left hand side there. There it is. And now he can get back his cards. Now he's going to go straight for a reincarnation summon. And in this, in this situation, yeah, that's fair because he has both a spell and trap in the grave and a celebrate great monster in the grave. So, yeah, he can. It makes sense to do that. So, now uh, the question is: we use uh, the reincarnate effect to add. Uh, no, I think uh, Jack has used celebrate great raw to set itself. Ha! Huh. That's uh, peculiar. Don't know why he did that. Um, when you use celebrate great raw's effect to set itself. Um, you have to banish it once it's being used and he didn't even have a fire monster to his hand what is he doing um, yeah a lot of wasteful play here really a lot of wasteful play Sunlight Wolf hasn't added a fire monster back I don't know do you think he wasn't able to uh, well I guess he technically wasn't able to summon anything else under, under Sunlight Wolf but he should have at the very least uh, added that back to his hand there was no reason to use Sunlight, uh, the uh, Raw's effect uh, but oh, I mean, it's made no much uh, much of a difference because we've gone over to Cameron here on uh, turn two, and Cameron has immediately opened up with Cosmic Cyclone. Um, yeah, I think that's such a waste. Why summon Heat Neo? Heat Neo is not doing anything at, on the board right now besides being twenty three hundred, and yeah, uh, kind of a waste. Um, that's just a big monster on the board, but you've got Bailey's in graveyard that's going to be protecting it. So why even bother putting Heat Neo on board? It hasn't used its effect. I don't know, uh, not not really the most ideal play there, kind of a bit confused by that. So Cameron's going to be coming here, 
and he's going to be doing some Cyber Dragon plays. He's going to be playing Forge Spray, which is said Hurts to the graveyard. And then Hurts is going to be able to add a, 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 a Cyber Dragon card from his deck to his hand. Uh, now he's going to play Cyber Repair Club, which is going to let him search a little bit more. And when Cyber, uh, when Cyber Dragon is in your grave and you have to make Cyber Repair Plant, you get some added benefits. Um, I don't think we meet the criteria for that. I think you have to have three in the graveyard or something. Um, but now Cameron searches out Core. Core is normal summon. And Core is going to search out another Cyber Dragon. Uh, spell a trap card. He probably is looking at something like Rev System or uh, Cyber Emergency. We'll see what he adds to his hand in a second or so here. Cyber Dragons are really, really strong. Um, uh, they are mostly a going second style deck, but that being said, uh, they don't have to go second. They can make okay-ish first turn boards. Nothing really too too frightening or too scary, but they can set up some forms of negation with things like uh, Infinity. Uh, so he goes to Cyber Emergency, adds that to his hand, and Cyber Emergency uh, can, I believe it's the monster to be born effect, where it can summon a Cyber Dragon back from the graveyard. And now we discard one for Galaxy Soldier, Galaxy Soldier's effect is going to kick in and he's going to be able to search out another uh, Light Machine monster from his deck. And that's, I'm more than likely going to be another Galaxy Soldier. And then uh, maybe we'll see uh, play for Infinity uh, coming up soon. Um, I've noticed that a lot of Cyber Dragon players only play two Galaxy Soldiers. I don't necessarily understand why. I think you would almost want to maximize uh, an opening this. I guess you kind of can be bricky because you leave one in your deck that you can't use. But I think this is kind of like a guarded case. I think it's almost like worth doing so. But I'm no Cyber Dragon player by any means. And here we have an amazing card, Machine Duplication, which targeting core is going to let uh, uh, Cameron summon out two more Cyber Dragons in the field. And with that, um, Cameron has a ton of resources in order to kind of set up a board here. In fact, he may even have enough to go for game right now. Uh, so Cameron is going to use. Galaxy Soldier and Cyber Dragon Core. Um, what happened to his other Galaxy Soldier? I don't know, he didn't use it for some reason. He added it to his hand, but I guess he didn't use it. He summons out Seager, and then uh, he used the two machine monsters, and now Seager is going to um, be... Uh, he, now he's going to summon Cyber Dragon Infinity underneath Seager. He's going to take off Heat Neo, and now he's got a Cyber Dragon Infinity, which has 20... I want to say 27? 2700 attack. And then uh, also one form of the game, plus Seager, which I don't think Seager works on Infinity. I don't think you can attack, increase the attack boost on Infinity. I think it has a 2100 attack. So uh, it's going to do a bit of damage here, but it's not going to really be able to add uh, much attack to it. So he's going to attack for 27, and then he's going to attack for 2100 here. A um, bit of an equalizer. And then he sets one card. And then I think this is probably going to be the end of his turn here. So back over to Jack. Jack opens up with Mind Control. Of course, um, Cameron's going to negate that because he's not going to want him to take Infinity. Mind Control is such a great card. And there is System Down. Oh, that hurts. That really, really hurts. So System Down banishes all of Cameron's machine monsters from his uh, field and his graveyard by paying a thousand life points. And that's going to be really crippling. There, that's going to really, really hurt. Uh, Sister Down has been a card we've been using quite a lot recently at our locals because of Orcus. It really does well, both in combination but also in substitution for Artifact Lancia. Uh, just being able to banish all the cards and resources in their grave uh, really hurts an Orcus player here. So, unfortunately, Cameron uh, is going to uh, feel the brunt of that because he's also playing a machine deck and machines are a really powerful deck right now. So, uh, System Down, that's really, really hurts. There goes all of. Uh, Cameron's hard work and now Jack is just free to pop off here. So yep, Spinny uh, 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 Buffalo is uh, sent to the graveyard for uh, uh, For Balix. Spinny is discarded. He draws two more. Now we activate Will. Will summons out Heat Eater through Heat Eater being a big boy. Uh, he's now going to reincarnate Heat Eater. Shuffle back in um, uh, Cameron's uh, Spell and Trap card. Uh, I think that's a good move there. He can also use Heat Eo's effects now that's been reincarnated to increase the attack of Spinny but to 2300. Unless he's going to save that for later on, maybe. He uses Spinny to switch some itself to the field. Then now he's going to use Foxy's effect, discard Jack Jaguar, Foxy summon to the field. Now we're going to see another Mirage Sadio. Um, we'll see what comes out of this. 
Um, no, we've got, uh, yeah, there's Mirage Sally will be shuffled in for Jack Jaguar. Jack Jaguar summoned underneath Spinny. Um, I think Cameron's just totaling up the damage to see is this going to be game. Even if Jack hasn't made game yet, this is going to be game. There's a lot of resources on the board. And I, we already know that uh, Jack plays Transco Talker, which means he has the update jammer combo here. And uh, that, at the very least, is going to be able to sweep the game. But this is a lot of damage on board here. Um, really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Uh, this is the thing with Cyber Dragon. I don't know why he went for Infinity. I don't know. Can you not have made a bigger play and just done more damage? I don't know. Um, but I don't know Cyber Dragon too well myself. But... Uh, I'm not sure about that Infinity. Infinity used to be one of the most terrifying monsters in the game. Now it's just a single negate. We can play through it quite easily. Hey, look, it's Update Jammer. And Update Jammer is going to now be uh, summoned to the field. And now we are going to use two monsters to summon out Sunlight Wolf. Um, Update Jammer has a really unique effect, and which we're going to see right here. If it is used to link summon a monster, you can declare that that monster has the ability to attack twice in this turn. So he's used it to summon Transco Talker. So Transco Talker is going to be able to attack twice, and now he summons use Transco Talker's effect to summon back Update Jammer, and because of that, he's going to be able to attack the game quite easily. Good game to both players. Some really questionable moves there. Some really rough practice there. Unfortunately, Cameron couldn't really get much started, but regardless, good game on both sides. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care.